Hello gamers! My name is Dark and this is a very simple tutorial on how to scale up power and speed in Create using cogs. So cog wheels come in two flavors. We have small cogs and we have the large cogs. And in Create, these cogs transfer rotational power. They're a lot like gears in real life. So in the early game of uh, Create and whatever mod packs you're using, you're going to want to create some form of power using rotational energy. And cogs help you scale that rotational energy to um, achieve what it is you want to achieve, to power what you want to power. And there are two basic ways of getting rotational energy early game. Probably the easiest is the water wheel. There are two sizes of water wheel. The small, which generates 256 stress units and the large, which generates 512. However, they go at different speeds. So we can see here, this is only going at four RPM, whereas this guy is gonna be going at eight. It's generally recommended to uh, make the larger cogwheels. The smaller ones, I would say, aren't really worthwhile and like it's not that much more expensive to create the big ones. The other form of rotational energy is a windmill. So here we have a windmill bearing, which is usually quite a bit more expensive to craft. And on top of which we have stuck 32 sails in this instance, four sails of eight. Each one of these sails generates 64 stress units. So when this is going, you can see we have 2,048 stress units, only going at four RPM by default here, which is the same as your large water wheel. If you were to hook machines up directly to any of these uh, things that are in motion, you're going to, some of them should work, but they're gonna work incredibly slowly and it's really not bearable. What you need to do is use gears in order to be able to scale up that power, make it more usable, get the maximum amount of uh, usage of those stress units by speeding things up. Of course, gears don't just scale power, they can transfer it. So you can see here, you have this little handy guide. You get the ghost gear appearing on either side, telling you where you can place them. And you can mesh two small cogs together like this. So the speed is remaining the same on both of these. We're just moving the power across. And each time we do that, it changes the direction, the rotational direction. So this is an easy way to change the direction of rotation without creating a gearbox, which is another way to do that. So this one here is going clockwise, which is making this one here go anti-clockwise, which is making this one here go clockwise again, and so on. Large gears you cannot place next to each other. See, there is no ghosting. What you can do is place them off to the side and transfer the energy around a right angle corner. So if you need to take a turn with your cogs, this is what you use the large ones for. When they mesh together, they do a 90 degree turn. And the way gears work is basically just by using larger and smaller ones meshed together in a certain pattern in order to speed things up. So you see here the speed, if we just follow this cog around, the speed here is relatively slow because it's a small clog close to the central uh, point of rotation here. But if we go all the way out here, you know, you can see how much faster that same point is going in comparison to here. That's basically how gears work. With the water wheels, it's usually best to start with a large gear like that, uh, because with a, if you put a small one on, the only other thing you can do is put a large one in front of it to scale the power speed up, because this is going faster than this on the inside, but um, you've achieved nothing with this small one. So on a large water wheel or, or any water wheel, always attach a large gear first, I would recommend. Then you can use your small gears to mesh into the large ones in order to speed them up. So the speed that the outer cog of the large is turning is going to turn the smaller cogs at those same speeds, doubling it up. And these you can place on the diagonals like so. We can't place it down there because there's blocks, but um, for example, we'll place this one up in the air like this. And it's changed, it's going the opposite direction again. So this is clockwise, this is counterclockwise. And you can see here, this is turning twice as fast as this. We can measure that right here. So this will be four RPM. This guy, eight, we've doubled it up. All of this logic works in reverse as well, of course. So if we actually started with a small and then put a large off to the side, what it's gonna do is halve the speed. You can see how that this is moving at half the speed of the little one in the, in the front. So this will be four, this will be two. And that same logic applies to everything I'm gonna show you. If you just reverse everything I'm gonna show you about scaling up, 
it'll scale the power down. But you don't usually find yourself needing to do that very often. So how do we get it even faster from here? Well, this is where we make this guy attach to a big one again, like this. So this inner cog speed is making the outer cogs here move faster. That's it. So on a large cog, you diagonally attach a small one. And on a small cog, you put a big one in front of it. And that's the basic rules. And you just keep scaling in that exact same way. There are some restrictions. So obviously I can't place one here because we have scaled the power up four times. So uh, it can't be moving four times the speed and four times slower at the same time. You can only do one or the other. So we can put it off to the side here. If you really wanted a cog here, a small cog there, this is where your shafts can come in handy. So you just extend it with the shaft. In this instance, you would put the shaft there to be efficient. And then you would put your small cog there. And then those two aren't attached. And if we tried attaching them, you'll see that that just won't allow you to. Because this is now moving at 16 RPM. So we've scaled up from 4 to 16. We can do it again, small cog off diagonally, big cog in the front. And again, small cog diagonally, big cog in the front. Small cog off diagonally. There we go, and we can go up to the maximum here, which is 256. So with a water wheel, the maximum speed you're gonna be able to get out of this is 256 RPM. And we still carried across those 512 stress units, but bear in mind any machine you plug into this, it's going to use more stress units the faster it's going. So if you stuck a simple thing on the end here, like a fan, this single fan is going to use all 512 of those stress units at that speed, at 256 RPM. It's a small device, it doesn't use a lot, it's currently sucking in the power. If you wanted it to go the other way, you have uh, choices. You could either put a gearbox in between the two, or like we were showing earlier, the cheaper way is just to use a uh, another cog next to it. Boom, and we've overstressed the system because we've got two of them. Let's take that one out, and now this is going the opposite direction because we've put these two cogs next to each other, and that is now pushing air out rather than pulling. But yeah, you can see how easy it is to overstress the system, and the only way you would solve that is by adding more power at the source, which would be over here, and you would add a second water wheel, like so, and that would need to have its own water source that is powering it. That would double up the number of stress units available and allow both of these fans to run at that speed of 256 RPM. If you want to run more machines off of the same single water wheel, then you'll just have to reduce the speed at which they're running. If you wanted your fan to be pointing vertically rather than horizontally like this, you could do the trick with the large cog wheels and place them in this orientation, and that will allow you to scale up the power again and stick the fan pointing upwards like so. Okay, over to the windmill. So again, you could use gearboxes here, so you've got a vertical gearbox which is going to transfer the vertical rotational power to horizontal, and you can attach things that way. Or if a gearbox is a little bit out of reach early game, like you can just do the, the cog thing, like so with the large cogs, to move it horizontally if that's the orientation you needed it. And from there, it's exactly the same thing, right? So you just start scaling the power up. You put a small off to the diagonal of the large, and you put a large on the front of the small. Small off to the diagonal of the large, large on the front of the small. Small off to the diagonal of the large, large on the front of the small. And it'll just get faster and faster and faster. Uh, this has a lot more stress units. We've got 2,000 stress units here. So let's scale this all the way up to 256. There we go, 256 RPM. And we've got those 2,000 stress units. So in this case, if we were to take the fan, put one here, uh, that's only using 512. So in theory, with this amount of stress units, we could add four fans. And we're maxing it out. So that'd be 512, 1024, 204. And if we added a, uh, another one here, boom, we're going to overstress that system. But you can see how windmills, once you're able to produce them, it's really worth trying to invest in getting a windmill bearing um, if you can afford it, and then creating some sales because uh, it's much more efficient way of generating power. Um, you don't need to worry about your water sources. You can kind of just plot them down wherever you need them. Whereas it can be a little tricky to figure out exactly how and where to fit your water sources into your world. And unlike with the water wheel, you need to add more water wheels. With the windmills, you just add more sails. So you just come along and you would scale this up with as many sails as is necessary to get to the number of stress units that you need. It's generally a lot more flexible. 
with windmills, if you want to reverse the direction of the power, they have this little control on them. So hold right click on there and you can change the um, rotation direction and the whole thing will spin the other way. That might save you a gear or two if it ended up going the wrong way for you. And that is how to scale power in Create easily with your cogs. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please do give us a like. And if you want to see more useful things in Create, Terraforma Craft and Vanilla, then please subscribe. And while you're here, why not check out my podcast, Intentional Game Design, where myself and my good friend VidMC, we talk about Minecraft and all of the new updates and changes that are coming, as well as some other occasional interesting facts and opinions about the game. My name is Dark. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.